try to uh, discuss today. And this is coming from an inspiration of one of the women who are participating in the Chizuk mission for many years. And she was expressing to me something that I've heard many, many times during this period of the year, which is Bein HaMetzarim, between uh, Shavas Batamas and Tisha B'av. And that is the challenge or the anguish that some of us might feel not being able to connect to this to the level of mourning or the level of loss that this period of time uh, allows us or uh, brings us to be able to focus on. And I think that that's a, a serious challenge for many of us. And I'd like to uh, jump in and see what, how we can sort that out together. So the first thing I'd like to do is just read with you excerpts, very brief excerpts from the Mavi Machronim, starting from Yeshayahu, who lived probably around 160 years before the Churban Bayis. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu was already telling Yeshayahu to, to warn the people, to tell them what will, what will happen. And this is going on for hundreds of years. So this is what Hashem tells Yeshayahu. Yeshayahu, excuse me? Rishon. Rishon, right. So, he first, he predicts the destruction. We're in Pasuk 11, that's your number one. Number one of the single sheet, you with me? Yes. Okay. And the people, he's describing that the people, of course, anytime there's an anticipation that there's going to be a siege in Yerushalayim, the main, one of the primary concerns, or the first concerns, is the water supply. So they're going down to see you know, examining and preparing for the past, for the, for the, uh, for the siege. But we're talking about the future. In other words, Yeshayahu is describing Klal Yisrael at a future time doing this. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So Hashem reflects, tells Yeshayahu, I'm in the middle of Pasuk Yudalef, below, below so they're, in other words, they're going and checking out the water supply. They're like proud of themselves that they're like figuring this out. And none of them are even, it's not even registering on anyone that the way Yerushalayim was set up was that there are water sources underneath that can supply water. And of course, who did that? Hashem. Velo hibatchem el osaha. It's not registering on anybody. Oh, Hashem did this. They didn't see this. So now, this is what's going to happen. This is the Chorban. And a Kaddish Baruch Hu's cry is saying to them, crying, to, to express, to feel the mourning, to cry. And what was their reaction? The Hine, Sason Vesimcha, Harog Bakar Ushot Son, Achol Basa Ushos Yayin. They're making merry. They're, 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 they're making banquets. And they're saying, Achol Vishaso, Kimachar Namos. You think it's Shakespeare. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow when they'll die. Lahavdal Yeshayahu. Eat, drink, kimachar namos. This is their reaction. Now we're going to Yirmiyahu. Yirmiyahu was the Navi that lived through the Chorban. That means warned the people before the Chorban, lived during the Chorban, traveled with Kla Yisrael to captivity in Bavel. This was Yirmiyahu. So Hashem says before the Chorban, he's giving him a symbolic act take 
uh, uh, an azar is like a, a cloth piece of fabric that covers this area. Kachas azar, Asher Kanisa, he told Hashem told him to to to, to buy it. Asher al Mosneha, that that you're wearing. V'kum lech parasa, go to a certain place. V'tamnei husham bin bin the kick hasela and hide it. Hide this uh, this this azar into in this place. And then Hashem told him to go back in a few days and find it. And he saw, Yemiyahu saw, lo yitzlach what was worthless. It was destroyed. So Hashem says to, uh, to, 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 Yishayah, to Yemiyahu, this is the meaning of the symbolic act. Kacha ashis es ge'on Yehuda the es ge'on Yerushalayim harav. This is what I will do, destroy the glory of Klal Yisrael, and the glory, the pride of Yerushalayim, the great Yerushalayim. And he explains, Ki kasher yidba keizar es masnei ish, in the same way that this cloth it holds tight against a person's body, kein hidbakti elai es kol beis Yisrael. That's how Hashem that's how Klai Yisrael was attached to Hashem. The es kol beis Yehuda um Hashem. Lihiyosli la'am u'l'shem u'l'sehilu u'l'sefaris v'lo shameu. To be that nation, that glorious nation attached to Hashem. But they didn't listen. So in that same parak, later on, Hashem says, with this warning, v'imlo tishba'uha and if Klai Yisrael don't listen, Hashem will go to a place called Mistarim, a hidden place, and Hashem will cry. Because of their, of their arrogance. Hashem will cry. Because Hashem's flock is carried away in captivity. Kaddish Baruch Hu's cry. Then again, Yeshayahu anticipating this, this Chorban again, predicting this Chorban again, way, way earlier. Hain erelam tsa'aku chutza, malachei shalom mar yufkoyin. Who's crying now? The malachim are crying because of this destruction. What, yeah. So the water that was hidden underneath initially when we were speaking at the first passage in Israel, is that the place Hashem went where was some well, like, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent question, really. The Gemara discusses what exactly it means, Bemis Tarim, and the Sifzah Chaim explains it also. It's an interesting, it's a, it's very, I'm not taking that direction, but I just wanted to highlight who is mourning, who is crying over this, over the destruction, and what were they crying about? So we're going to get back to it, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll direct you to that Gemara afterwards. So now, this is, this is Eicha. Yirmiyahu wrote Eicha, and this is after the Chorban. Eicha ya'iv ba'apo Hashem espastion. How Hashem, in his anger, Ya'iv, clouded the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. What does it mean, clouded? Destroyed. Black. Blocked, good. Hitting. Blocked, what else is clouded? <laughs> good. Confusion. Foggy. Clarity, excellent. Hishlich mi shamayim eretz tif eretz Yisrael. Hashem, cast down from heaven to earth to Ferris Israel, the glory of Cloud Israel. We don't feel this today. I don't know who does. But that's a, that's a different possibility. But it's the same it's the same concept, correct? It's the same concept. So now the Gemara says that's the Gemara that talks about the Mistarim. The Gemara says this is a, a Gemara Chagiga Daf 
Daf Hey Amud Beis. Oh, you don't have it. So the Gemara says that when Re Ra Rebbe was reading, held, held the Sefer Eicha in his hands, and he read this Pasuk, the Pasuk we just read, the, 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 the Sefer fell from his hands, and he said the following, Me'igara Ram Libira Amikta. From a high roof, this is the status of Klal Yisrael, the highest place, Mikam for Yisrael, to the deep pit, Libira Amikta. This is expressed in this Pasuk. So now, number one, the morning is for the loss of this glory of Klal Yisrael. And who's crying here? HaKadosh Baruch who's crying? And the Malachim are crying. But so far, we don't see? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, hold on to that. Now I'm going to read you the Pasuk that we read as the Haftorah during Mincha of, of, uh, of Tisha B'Av. It starts like this. It's in Yeshayahu. Dirshu Hashem Bihimatz O. Kara'uhu bioso karov. Seek out Hashem while he may be found and call him while he is near. What does that mean? What does it mean? Seek out Hashem while he may be found. You say this in Elul. Good, 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 good. Right. It's the same Haftorah of, of Rosh Hashanah. Right. Good. What? It's what? All the fast days. Fast days. Yeah, 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 right. In all the fast days we say this, we say this Haftorah. Right. But what's the behemoth? Oh. Why is Hashem, why are we describing Hashem as, why? Why are we saying that Hashem is close then? Why is he close then? He's waiting. During a fast day. During Tisha B'Av. During three weeks. Him that he's close? Okay, hold on to that answer. Keep that as an open question. If we're more than kind of, doesn't the kind of where I say, where can you find God to be like me? And maybe it's just difficult to tell you how to work with God to look for him and you're open. Okay, excellent, excellent. Hold on to that question. We need to do a lot more work. We're going to revisit it. Okay, so now, we have a lot of work on our hands. Because number one, we see from these psukim very clearly that the morning is great. And we're here to learn, to understand, and to feel this great loss for ourselves and for Klal Yisrael. And even though this year we went through tremendous pain and great fear and confusion and overwhelming isolation and loss, we find our path toward deep mourning, not easily accessible. And there are many roads to find our way. And perhaps it would be helpful right now to gain a deeper understanding of what we really lost. So on Shavasa Batamas, the enemy breached the walls of Yerushalayim. And on, the, on Tisha B'Av, the base of Mikdash was destroyed. So I'd like to gain with you an understanding of the meaning or the essence of Yerushalayim. So let's start. Yeah, we're going to go back. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's understand first. We want to understand Yerushalayim. Let's start with the name. Because we know the name is the essence. Correct? Somebody's name is its essence. So what's the name Yerushalayim? So good. So if you look at these psukim, now you're up to your second um, handout, which has a double face. Number one. Umalki Tzedek. Umalki Tzedek Melech Shalein. Hotzi Lechem V'yayin V'hu Kohen Lekel Elyon. Malki Tzedek greeted Avraham after he won the battle between the four kings and the five kings. And Mal Malki Tzedek, who is Shane, the son of Noah, came to greet, who was the king of Shalem, 
That's Yerushalayim. He named it Shalem. He came to greet Avraham. Hold on to that Pasuk. Next Pasuk. This is after the Akedah. Avraham said, Vayikra Avraham, Shem HaMakom Ha'u, that place of the Akedah, Hashem Yireh, which means Hashem will see, Asher Ye Omer Hayom Bahar Hashem Ye Ro'eh. As it is said to this day, this needs to be understood, in the mountain of Hashem it shall be seen. So this is not, not easy at all. Number one, Abraham is calling it Hashem Yireh. And then the Pasuk continues, Asher Ye Omer Hayom, that will be said this day, whenever that is, Bahar Hashem In this mountain, in this place, in this mountain, it shall be Hashem. It, uh, Hashem will be seen. Hashem, it shall be seen. Whatever that means. Okay. So now let's look at Rashi. Hashem here. Eh. You with me? Targumo. So number one, Avraham is calling that place of the Akeda. That's the base Hamikdash, Yerushalayim. Hashem here. And what does this mean? Hashem Yevchar V'yir Elo Es HaMakom Hazeh L'Hashros Bo Shechinas L'Akriv Kan Karbanos Hashem will see, meaning will choose this place as the place for His Shechina to rest in the world and to, and to, and to, and for Klal Yisrael to bring Karbanos. That's Hashem Yireh. Hashem Ye Omer Hayom that will be said this day, that throughout the generations it will be said, a love on this place, in this, on this mountain, Hashem will show himself to his people. Okay, so now. Let's, let's understand this for a minute. This is not easy. So what did, what did Avraham say? Avraham called it Hashem Yireh, which means Hashem will see. That's what I'm going to call it is. That's the MS. Hashem sees. You understand? Whether we relate to it or not, it is. That's the reality with a capital R. So now, which means, what does it mean it is? This is the place where the Shekhinah will rest. That's it. Avraham experienced the Akedah and understood this is the place that Hashem is going to choose for the Shekhinah to rest. Now, we have to experience it. It has to register on us. And that's the second part of the Pasuk. Asher ye omer hayom bihar hayom bihar Hashem ye ro'eh. We have to make that connection between it is, reality with capital R, and I'm experiencing it. It's registering on me. Okay, hold on to that. Now let's understand this a little bit better. So, so far, we have Yerushalayim. The name is a composite of Shalem Yeru, correct? Right? Malki Tzedek Mel Shalem and Hashem Yireh. And what does this mean? What's the significance of it? So now let's look at the Meshachachma. So the Meshachachma first quotes the Medrash. Shem Kara Oso Shalem which is what we just saw. Shane, that's Malki Tzedek, called Yerushalayim Shalem. He named it. Avraham Karoso Yireh. Avraham called it Yireh, meaning Hashem sees. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Im Korea ni oso Yireh. B'Shem Shakara Oso Avraham. If I would ch choose to name this city Yireh, after the experience that Abraham had and that Abraham called it that, Shane, Adam Tzadik Mitra'e, Shane would be upset. 
The im neo so shalei. And if I only call the city shalem, Abraham Adam Tzadik Midra'im, Abraham would be upset. Ella, Harini Koreo so Yerushalayim. Thereby, HaKadosh Baruch Hu called Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, to include these two aspects of the experience. Now, we still don't understand it. So now, this, now the Meshachachim is going to explain it. Vaha Inyan. The Shem Hayah Bedor HaMabel, the shame was during the flood. And he, he fed all the creatures. He took care of all the creatures who were in the ark. So what was the focus there? What was the purpose of all of that? Because by doing that, he was rectifying the 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 the, um, the cause of the destruction of the world, which was a lack of chesed, a lack of connection one to the other. Each each creature uh, d d destroyed its way. And there was there was robbery. The whole direction, the whole experience of the Teva was to reverse that corruption and to build the world on Olam Chesed Yibaneh. And that's what, that is expressed in the word Shalem. What does Shalem mean? Shekol hamin ha'anishi hu adam echad. Shalem means full. Whole means when, when, when Shem in the Teva took care of all the animals, they united into one body of creatures of Hashem, each one connected to the other, each one receiving and, 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 and experiencing each other. That's the Shalem. They became one unit. It's not Melech Shalem like you said in the first line on the top of the paper, because now you're saying something else. Now you're yeah, talking no. about shame and being metaking the yeah, yeah, but, the no, no, Right, right, right. But again, again, let, let's understand this. When the Torah says later on, right, he's the Melech Shalem. Right. That means he's the king of the city called Shalem. Now, why did he call the city Shalem? Of the tick on the because chamber. he he I, he he epitomized that that a concept in the world. He made the world one again. He made the world interconnected to each other. We're all parts of the same world. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. No, no. I said initially. Yeah, Malkit said that is shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. I'm sorry. I, I, okay, fine. Okay. The chulam keechad. Where are we? The chal echad who may eva may eva reha adam hagadol, and each part of the world is part of this big system called Hakadosh Baruch Hu's creation. The chal echad nitzrach chaveiro. Each person needs each other. Mushpa u mashpia zemize. Each one impacts and receives from the other. The chulam keechad nosim kiyum min ha enoshi ha vnitzki uso, and all together we're carrying the 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 human the humanity and its eternity. You with me? Okay, that's shame. Amnam, Avraham, his pal seif ma'od b'chokma. Avraham took a different direction. Avraham was a, was a was somebody who was who was the father of 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 right of the of ideas, the father of philosophy. V'lamad kol darchei hatoim. He learned all the philosophies of the world. V'hitvakeach ima imahem, and he argued with them. And through those debates, it was clear that HaKadosh Baruch Hu existed and he was involved in the world. And he never gave over 
any power to any other power. HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, Kvodo Va'atzmo, takes care and, is, and directs the world. Umishum Zeh, and this is, be careful, this is a very important uh, insight. Umishum Zeh, Tzali Avraham Hashem Yireh. And because of this, Avraham Davind Hashem Yireh. Okay, wait, okay, we're not, we're not there yet. Hold on to that. Skip for two lines. Veze Amar, Veze, now he's going back to the Pasuk. Asher ye Amer Hayom Bahar Hashem ye Ro'eh. Remember that Pasuk, that, and, and people will say that Hashem revealed himself on this mountain. Ritzono Lomar. That 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 Hashem will reveal. Each person will see, will experience Hashem revealing His glory through His miracles. Okay. Now you can understand it. Yerushalayim Benuya. Al The reason why Hakadosh Baruch Hu called Yerushalayim Yerushalayim is because Yerushalayim is built on these two ideas, two I, two concepts. Hainu lezakei chamus kalos she'ikaron b'moach to purify one's understanding, perspective of life. Hashkafas ha'olam which is primarily in a person's mind. In other words, that's what you always call the lens by which a person sees the world. That's his perspective, his understanding, his belief system, his assumptions. Okay? And that's purified. And to rectify and to adorn the midos that is primarily in the heart. So that means Avraham, mind, shame, heart. Yeru, shalaya. Okay, wait, we're not finished. V'zehu b'chlal ba'amram zal, and this is what's meant in this Gemara, very interesting Gemara. The basic meaning of that is that when you build a shul, you're supposed to build a shul with two doors before you walk into the base measure to daven. That's what it means, la'olam, right? So how does the Meshachach explain this? Zehu Before a person davens, he has to enter through these two open, these two passages, these two doors, the door of his mind and the door of his heart. What does that mean? To align his heart and mind to that they're connected with Hashem. Okay, good. So now the door of his mind is is per, what? What does it mean? Thoughts. What are we perfecting? Right, perfecting. Right. Well, how do you understand the world? How do, you, how do you understand Hashem in the world? How do you understand Ran Tov in the world? I, I, I mean, uh, this could be like the you know what I'm saying? Well, but like yes, you that's your mind. It. Wait, wait, wait. I thought you wait. Meant, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Don't worry. One thing I, one thing I promise you. If you, one, I can't promise you. No, I can't promise you this. I can only hope for this. But one thing, one thing, and I hope, and I, I hope somebody verifies this, whoever learned with me. My goal is that nobody should ever leave disheartened. Okay? I don't know, Janice? <laughs> I might Am I putting you on the spot? I might, feel, I might feel confused, but I'm thinking about it, still processing. So okay, confused, I'm not a problem. No, 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 Just this hard. Chani? Now, now I'm really, now I'm really putting, now I'm really Okay, 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 so it's 
fine. It's fine at this stage of our learning if you're saying but. Okay? You're planting the seeds. Okay, okay. The lochen, in other words, a person who enters uh, to, enters their, the space to daven, to connect HaKadosh Baruch Hu, enters through mind. How, how healthy is my perspective? And enters through lave, how healthy are my mitos? Now, of course, I want to reassure you this minute, because you never learned this minute before. And I can't do this to you, Miriam, okay? There's a continuum. There's always a continuum. It's never all or nothing. So the, the, to the degree that a person is continuously perfecting their understanding of life through the lens of Torah, and the degree that a person is continuously perfecting their midos, their lay, they're entering through those two doors to prayer, which becomes more effective. So it's a continuum. Okay. Can you repeat that last one to the degree that they're... Oh, yeah, Chani. I should have asked you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you last line. I didn't see you. What? I need the last line again, please. Okay. To the degree that they're... Perfecting. Right. In other words, it's a continuum. When you say, he who has to walk through these two doors of mind and heart to be able to daven Hashem, you could start getting nervous. Wait a minute. Am I perfect in my hashkafa sa'olam? I am perfect in my midos. Uh, maybe I shouldn't uh, go to shul anymore. Maybe I shouldn't open the siddur. No, just the opposite. It's a continuum. The more a person work in builds themselves and their understanding of life through the eyes of Hashem and Torah, that's called mabat shmaimi, and to agree that a person builds his midos, his heart, directed towards Hashem, the effectiveness of his experience in prayer will be different. The effectiveness of the prayer itself will be different. Okay, this is what the Meshachachim is telling us. Okay. So going to shul at this point has changed prayer. What? <laughs> going to shul at this point before we go anywhere else. Because we're kind okay. of right now changing Exactly. Prayer. Exactly. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Why? Because I, when I walk through those two doors. doors now, it's like, this is my mind, this is my heart. Is there any, is there any actual, uh, is there any actual physical two-door Physical, yes, 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 yes. That's what the Gemara is talking about. Physical two-doors. What? They must. Yeah, they do. They do, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, Kali, Kali, Kali. It didn't register. It didn't register yet. And that was again. Again. It is. Okay, wait. It's a halacha. The halacha is. Oh, I'm not see. I told you five minutes later. No, no, no. It's fine. No, it's fine. It is. The difference between the experience of it is, which is Hashem your air. And the difference between uh, uh, that they ye are there in future generations, it is, there are the two doors. Now it has to register that there's two doors. You with me? So it's the connection between the Mahshav and the Lev. That's part of the connection. But that's you part of it too. You can dive even, home. In other words, but more than that, I'm not talking about shul per right. se. I'm not talking about shul form. It could be shul form. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. Yes. But even if you take it as separate pieces, the more, and you know this to be true, the more a person understands and builds his his hashkafa sa'ola, and that's like a wide idea, the more that's clear and understood and before him, <coughs> that's going to impact his connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's prayer. And the more he perfects his mitos, the greater he is. That, that those two pieces become the keli by which that connection can be made. You understand? Okay, now let's get back to Yerushalayim. 
And I, I think one can add on to this Please. is saying that in light of the Meshach Chokma, each one is building their own Yerushalayim. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm not ready for that yet at all. At all. Not, not, I'm, I'm far away from that. What? I mean, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. So we really need like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, okay, no. go for it. Okay. Just one, just a song. Oh, wait, we're not ready for that yet. It seems interesting to me that Shame and Shalane, they both have the root of the Shin and the Mem, and the Lam of his leg connects them. Oh, wow. Very beautiful. beautiful. Gorgeous. That's Gorgeous. Nice. Okay, let's go back. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, let's continue. Uh, okay. You with me? Yes. Yeah. Lachen Yerushalayim. Kalilas Yofi. Mesos Kot Lachol Haaretz. This is a Pachzuk from Eicha. It has all-inclusive beauty. The all-inclusive is including both the mind and the heart. Celebrated by the whole world. That's Mesos Kol Haachol Haaretz. The Shamalu Shvatim, and there the Shvatim came up to David, Lahodos Lashem Hashem, to sing praise to Hashem. Ki, why? Ki Hamidos Vahamus Kolos, because a person's Midos and his worldview, Shnehem Nizgakaku Vinitaharu Bi Yerushalayim. I'm not ready for everyone having their own Yerushalayim. In Yerushalayim, proper, proper. What does that mean? They'll be they'll be purified. The power of Yerushalayim is to purify the mind and the heart. The lacheno kara oso Yerushalayim al shnei apulos. Okay, we're not finished yet. Okay, just hold on to it. Good. Now. Not only did Avraham experience this power of the Makom HaMikdash, but Yaakov experienced it as well. So look at number four. This is famous. You're going to be able to read these Pesukim quickly. He's going, to, he's going away from his house to Lavan. And he's sleeping. And he has a dream. What's the dream? So this ladder has its feet on the ground and its head reaching heaven. And angel are going, are going up and down. But he cuts Yaakov Mishnaso. He wakes up. Vayomer and he says, "Ochein, Yesh Hashem b'makom hazeh, v'anochi lo yadati. Hashem is in this place and I didn't know. Vayira, and he's afraid. Vayomer." Man no rahamakom haze. How awesome is this place? Ein ze ki ki im beis elokim. This place is the house of Hashem. Vze shar Hashemayim, and this place is the gate of heaven. So before we get to the Al Shech, I want to mark something for you. <coughs> Number tes zayim. Vayikatz. Yaakov woke up. What's a chen ki yesh Hashem b'makom hazeb anochi lo yadati? It registered. Okay. Number one. Number two. Vayira. What's that? He had an emotional response. He was afraid. Vayomar. What's that? He gave voice, he gave expression to that experience. Mano Rahamakom Hazeh. Okay, let's stop there. We're gonna get we're gonna fill it in. So now the El Sheikh makes this point, a magnificent point. Go back to your Pasuk. 
מה נורא המקום הזה? אין זה כי הם בייס אלוקים, וזה שער השמיים. So the Alshach says like this, Man no raha makom hazeh is speaking about the legs of the ladder standing on the ground. Ein zeh ki imbeis elokim, that's the ladder itself. V'zeh shar hashamayim, that's the top of the ladder. Okay, so now, what does that mean? <coughs> Because the Sulam, he's talking about that second, right, the ladder itself. Kamosha Kasavnu, Ki Hasulam Sheher Elo, the Sulam, the ladder that Hashem showed him, who Beis Hamikdash. That expresses, that's symbolic of the Beis Hamikdash. Va'al Rosho Omar, Vizesh Shar Hashemaya. So now, let's get the image. The foot of the ladder. The ladder, Beis HaMikdash. The Zeshar HaShamayim, the top of the ladder. What's happening? Okay, the Shechina. So what's happening? What's the Connection. What? Connection, excellent. Excellent. Connecting what to what? Man to Good, good. Connecting heaven to earth. Okay, you think it's simple, but it's not. Okay. I mean, that's my whole goal in teaching is that one thing. To help people connect heaven to earth. It's not easy. Okay. Now. Heaven to earth. Okay. Now. The Zeshar HaShemayim, look at Rashi, 6. Makom Tefillah. Zeshar HaShemayim. Yaakov experienced this. And he, and he right now marked it. This is the place of tefillah. La'alos tefillah sam hashamayimah. That their tefillah should go up to heaven. Is that an echo of the Meshachachma? Okay, good. So now, not only did Yaakov express what he was experiencing, but he also, he also did an act. So go back to your psukim. Yudches in number four. Vayashkein Yaakov baboker. You with you with me? Right. Vayudches. Vayikach es ha'even asher sam me rashoto. He took the the stone that was on, at his head. Vayosem osab matseva, and he made it a pillar. Vayatzok shemen al rosha. And he, and he, he poured, he poured oil over it. Okay, so now, let's understand this. So after, we're in, we're in um, the Ramban, number seven, three lines down. So after Yaakov said, V'zeshar HaShamayim, V'shov Yaakov L'kota Avanim, then Yaakov went back to gather the stones. He saw that there was one stone. And he placed it as a pillar in, that, in the middle of that place that he had this experience. Listen carefully. Vayared lo shemen min hashamayim. Vayatzak Aleha. Where did he get the Where did he get the oil from? Do you ever think about that? The Malach poured it. Down. Poured it. Right. I think it was in the state right. that he had. Him. No. This is what Ramban is telling us is the Shemen came down from heaven, and then he poured it. Shene Emar, Vayatzok Shemen Al Rosha. Okay. Hold on to that. Next. Uma asa hakadosh baruch hu. So what did Hashem do? Natal regel yemino. He took his right he, with his right foot. Kaviyachol. The tiba es ha'even al imkei tahomos. He took this stone and 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 um, no. 
Uh, right. Uh, sank it, yeah, buried it. It sank to the depths of the depths. De um, not even immersed. Sank, pushed it down. It sank to the depth of the earth. Va'asa osa sniff la'aretz. And that stone became the support of the earth. And you can understand how. Ka'adam shehu no saint sniff la'kipa. Like if you have an arch, a stone arch, that center stone is holding the whole thing up. So that stone Hashem took, placed it into the depths of the earth, and that became the support stone for the entire world. That stone is called the foundation stone. Right, the cornerstone, right. Shasham hu tabur ha'aretz. It's the center of the world, of the earth. Umisham niftacha ha'aretz. And from that place, the world expanded. Expanded, in other words, uh, uh, right, right, right. Va'aleha heichal Hashem omeid. And on that place is where the house of Hashem stands. Shene'emar. Now, I want to reflect on this with you. What's happening here? Let's, let's get the order correct. Number one, Yaakov did an act. He took the stone. And he took it to consecrate it to Hashem. But he didn't have oil. Hashem, number two, provided the oil from heaven. What does that tell me? Why is this now? Why is that stone now the corner of the, the, the center of the earth? Why? Excellent, 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 excellent. Hashem sent it back. That's true. That's the Shefa of the world. Hashem is responding. Good. That's the connection. The center of the world is connection. Okay, let's continue. Now. What's the proof that the oil came from the sky? Just the Ramban? Well, I, the Ramban is usually basing it on Midrashim. He, he didn't quote a Midrash here. Right? Okay, now, what you just said, that's tefillah. The core of the world is tefillah, is this connection. And Zeshar HaShemayim, the gate is open. So now, what do we have to do? Vayikatz. We have to wake up and say, Yesh Hashem b'makom hazeh, va'anochi lo yadati. This power to make that connection emanates from that exact place, from Yerushalayim. If you are making this connection in Mansi, it's coming from Yerushalayim. I'm serious. I'm not joking. This is not like a homiletic thought. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yes, absolutely. No, but that's validation for why it's a feeling. We should have in America. Right, okay, good. Wait, we're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. So that connection emanates from that exact place from Yerushalayim, from the Beis HaMikdash. So how, do, so how do we wake up? How, how do we become open to it? Our answer lies in Yerushalayim. How? By purifying our minds and by purifying our hearts. <coughs> and what's the source of this power that we can draw on from Yerushalayim? Go back to the Rashi number six. I didn't finish that Rashi. Umed Rasho, you with me? Shebeis hamikta shelmala mechuvan kineged beis hamikta shelmata. That the that the the physical 
the structure here is directly opposite, right, good, to the base Hamikdash Shel Mala. Now, this is a gorgeous thought. It's a thought that we grew up with since pre 1A. But what does it mean? What does it really mean? Let's look at the Al Shech. That's on your single sheets. Okay, so first, first look at, look at these sukkim together with me. Tehillim, chaf, chaf, right, kuch chaf beis. Okay. Shir hamalo sotevet samach to be beis Hashem neilech. We're going to the base of Hashem. Om dos hayu hayu raglenu bish arayich yushalai. So the Al Shech takes note that our feet stand on the gates of Yerushalayim. He's asking, what are gates? How do feet, I have, right? How do feet stand on two gates? How does that work? Okay, the next pasuk is going to explain it to us. Yerushalayim habnuya ki'ir shechubara lo yachdav. What's that? Yerushalayim is built on this connection between the Yerushalayim Shel Mata and Yerushalayim Shel Mala. You with me? Okay, now what does that mean? Let's go now to the Ashik. Yadua mi ma'amaram ki beis hamikta shel mata mechuvan keneged shel mala. You with me? That's what we just said. Now listen to what the Ashik is telling us. Again, this is not homiletics. This is real. Vahanichnas b'shel mata, a person walking into the base hamikdash, kenichnas b'shel mala. It's like he walked into the base hamikdash in heaven. Vahakarban hanase b'shel mata, and the carbon that he sac sacrificed in the base hamikdash on earth, kenase b'shel mala. He he. It's like he sacrificed it. In the base of Mikdash Shalmala in heaven. Skip a few lines. The Huki Kol Shefa Ha'Elyon Nishpa B'Tachton. What does it mean that one that the base of Mikdash, the heavenly base of Mikdash, is parallel to the earthly? That means all the heavenly Shefa. Where do we hear that? The Shemen. The heavenly shefa, the heavenly flow, the heavenly blessing from Hashem. Nishpa b'tachton. It has an impact. It's, it flows down to the earth. That's the connection. That's Hashem's response to us. She'im lokein, if it's not the case, eich yashav elokim al ha'aretz. Well, how does Hashem dwell here? Of course it's the shefa coming down from heaven towards earth. That's how Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Shekhinah, could dwell on earth. V'chein Yerushalayim shel mata hu k'neged Yerushalayim shel mala. Now, that's how this, now go back to Yipsukim. Right? Yerushalayim habenu yesh'ir k'chubar lo yachdav. Now I'm going to finish it. I'm paraphrasing the rest of the Yalshech. Shesham alu shvatim. You with me? That there, the shvatim came up to the base of Mikdash. Shiftei ka. The, 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 the shvatim of ka, that means yud hey, olam haba, olam haze. You know that, right? Olam haba was created with the letter yud. Olam haze was created with the letter hey. This is the alshech. This guy, I mean, it's not the Alshech, but he quotes this. Shiftei uh, ka, in other words, those, that Klal Yisrael that stood in both worlds simultaneously as one. That's the Ka'ir Shechubra. You're living in this world and you are living in the next world, Gashmius Ruchnius, as one world. It's one world. Fused. It's like fused. Right. Good. Yisrael. This is it. Eidus. It's the reality. 
Lohodos l'shem Hashem. And this is the cause of praise for Hashem. The power that we have to transform self, to transform our world, that power is the power of Yerushalayim. So now, I ask you a question. What did we lose? We lost our connection. Okay. The ability to access. What, what are we mourning? Okay. The direct line. Okay. We're exactly what you're saying. We lost that clarity. We lost that connection. We lost an attachment to reality with a capital R. Can I say now wait, wait, I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for the bus. <laughs> don't get me, don't, don't, Fani, give me a chance. First of all, darling, this class is all for you. This class is, is, a, is a response to your question that you asked me, okay? Oh, so you should have a right to talk, right? Okay, okay, so now. We lost our attachment to reality with a capital R. Now, think about it for a minute. Stop for a minute. This is who I am. This is who I am. I'm connected to Hashem. I'm connected to reality with a capital R. So now, what did I lose and what am I mourning? Did we lose the loss of self. I, right. I lost myself. I lost myself. I lost that I want. That's possible too. I lost I lost what it is. I lost I lost I want it. I lost the Vaika. I lost so much. Is if it's you is this what you asked for? So you lost your essence? Right. Excellent. Now How did Kalei Yisrael lose this? How did Kalei Yisrael lose its glory? What does its glory mean? Its glory doesn't only mean we get standing ovations. It doesn't mean that we get, uh, that we get um, Nobel Prizes. How do we lose our glory? Our glory is that connection. Our glory is that reality with a capital R. How did we lose it? They're doing the wrong thing. Okay, good. Look at the Nefesh HaChayim. Number eight. Good! Excellent! Look at number eight. This is the this is the Nefesh Achayim. Ki halo nevu chanetzer v'titus. This is the second bias. Lo asub ma'asehem shum pagam v'kilkul klal amala. Ki lo hayolahem chelak v'shorish bolamosa elyonos. They did not nevu chanetzer the first bias. And titus is the second bias. They did not destroy the Beis HaMikdash. The Nefesh HaChaim is telling us. We did. Right. Show up all Mosa Elinos because they had no power to impact. Once you're saying that the Beis HaMikdash Shalmata is connected to the Beis HaMikdash Shalmala, they have no power in the Elyonim. So what does it mean they destroyed the Beis HaMikdash? She Yehud Yecholim Lin Goa Sham Kalal B'Maasehem. Their deeds can't impact the heavens. Rock. Shebechet Eichetainu. Nis, listen to this. So Wait, listen to this. First, listen to this. Listen to this. Rak shebechata'enu. With our sins, nisma eight, we weakened, we diminished the tush, and we weakened kaviyachal koach gvur shalmala. We weakened kaviyachal Hashem's gvur in this world. The es mikdash Hashem timu kaviyachal ha mikdash elyon, and we made the mikdash elyon impure. For al yidei kach, hayol lehem koach lenevuchadnetzer v'titus lahachriv ha mikdash shel mata ha mechuvan neged ha mikdash shel mala. Okay, then they were able to destroy it. Kamosha emu chazal, kimcha techina. Tachinas. Titus ground up fine flour. It was destroyed already. It was destroyed in Mala. Harei kol avonoseinu. 
Hechrivu Neve Mala Olamos Elyonim Hakadoshin. This is the final touch. Right. More than, right. The Beis Hamikdash, through our sins, the Beis Hamikdash above was destroyed. The Hema Hechrivu Rach Neve Mata. And they just destroyed, like you're saying, Janice, the, the physical building. Exactly what happened in Miami. Okay. 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 Now, now uh, you can't leave. You can't leave this heart, right? Okay. So now, how do we get it back? How do we rebuild it? And Chazal tell us that in every generation where the Beis Hamikdash is not rebuilt, it's as if that generation was responsible for its destruction. Wow. So now, let's return to the name Yerushalayim. The answer to how we rebuild it is the essence of Yerushalayim. Yeru. To internalize the Hashem is involved in our daily lives and we're living in his house. And I'll give you two stories. When Rebbe Tintorsky was at the end, you know, in her uh, later years and her awareness of who she was was not strong. Which Rebbe Tintorsky? I would have to verify that. She used to say like this, I don't know who I am, but I know whose I am. That's living in Hashem's house. Now I'm going to tell you another story about Rebetzin Kotla, Reb Aaron's Rebetzin. At the end of her life, she was in a coma in the hospital, and a young girl came in to visit her. And the person who was with the Rebetzin said to this young girl, you know what, go hold the Rebetzin's hand and dab in mincha with her. Every time that girl said shame Hashem, the Rebetzin squeezed her hand. That's living in Hashem's house. That's Yeru. And there's a continuum. Even if we don't have that built into us, the more we build that in, the more Yeru is built again. Shalem, Shalayim. The build into ourselves the connection to each other, the responsibility one to the other. We can't live without each other. We learned that this year. We learned how painful it was to be separated. This is a testimony. This Chizuk mission is a testimony to the glory of that connection, of Shalayim, of that part. Now, through our Chatan, the Gemara discusses the difference between the reasons why the first base Hamikdash was destroyed and the second base Hamikdash was destroyed. What Chatan <coughs> led to each. And there's a whole discussion because the, the, the first base Hamikdash seems that the Chatan was so egregious, the three cardinal sins, and yet the Golis was 70 years and then they were able to rebuild the base Hamikdash. And our Golis, which came from Sinas Chinam, it's, it's a, it's a gullus that lasted thousands of years, and the Gemara discusses it. And the answer that the Gemara gives is because the sins of the second base Hamikdash were sins that were pnimi. That's sinas chinam. It was an erosion, a corruption of the inner self. And, the, and when the Gra, when Vilna Gon is reflecting on this Gemara, he says like this, Rachman boy, Hashem wants heart. That's the building of our Pneumius. 
So now, let's turn to this Haftorah again. The first thing that we read. And you'll understand it. That's the mourning. That's the loss. That's the drive to rebuild. To rebuild self. Which ultimately is drawn from the power of Yerushalayim and rebuilds Yerushalayim. So this is the Pasuk. We are in the first sheet, the single page, number five. Dershu Hashem Behimatzo. Hashem is saying to Klal Yisrael, Seek Hashem while he may be found. This is the time, Bein HaMetzorim, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is very close. Why? Because Klal Yisrael is in pain. Because Klal Yisrael is mourning. Because he's crying with us. We have to be crying. <coughs> HaKadosh Baruch Hu is crying with us. With the Malachim. Dirshu es Hashem bihimatzo, while he may be found. Karuhu, call him. Bihi so karov, while he is near. And then, Nuum Hashem alakim, Hashem says to Yeshayahu, Mekabetz nitche Yisrael od. Kaddish Baruch will gather all of the people again. I will, I will gather those besides those who are already gathered. There's another nice. gathering. So before I take questions, I want to leave you with the Sihi Ratzon. This is a very, very precious time for us, these weeks, a time of reflection, a time of building and a time of mourning and Hashem is inviting us to find him while he's close. He wrote some that we should be zoche to be able to use this time well towards the Geula Shlema Bukharov. Thank you. I'm just wondering there have been so many horrific times in Fly Yisrael during our gullus, because it's such a long gullus. Like I'm thinking of my whole family, uh, my parents' family who perished in Hitler. I mean, if we think Miami's bad and Miron and Stalin, I mean, what was worse? So I'm trying to think like, what should we do? Because no, what did they do again. then? No, 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 again, again, again. I, I like, I love the question. And I, I think that part of the work that we did today is when you say, and when you ask, what should we do? The first thing is not to assume that the map is the same for each person. Okay, in other words, what should we do means, I'm not, of course, me, who am I? I'm saying in general. A cold kore is not going out and saying, everyone should be doing this, and everyone should be doing that. What everyone should be doing is going back to their own personal labs and finding themselves. Seriously finding themselves. And the path towards that is different for each person. That's what makes it so rich and so unique. I, I get upset when like something happens and these I hate saying rabbi, but whatever, I say it's because it's usually because of the women, uh, sneakers or whatever. I think everyone has to look inside themselves and see what they can do better. The six that science speaks about that very strongly. The last ma'amar in Nidos, in his, in his section on Bitachon, it's, a, it's, a, the, it's the, it's the, it's the, talks that the Sisekhayim gave to his students during the Yom Kippur War. You can literally lift that and use it for this time. It's amazing. It's an amazing mama. Volume 2. What does he say? <laughs> I just recorded 
about five and a half hours. <laughs> 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 so I'm not sure you want me to answer. No, I heard. Well, I just want to say as long as I'm listening to teaching, you know, as I was absorbing it, you know, the enormity of the fact that. You know, our sins, meaning us, our ancestors, the generation before, destroyed the base of the Shalmala, which is overwhelmingly powerful. But it means that, you know, you will see, I'm not wrestling, but it would be not what says if you can destroy, I'm sure that came, it's completely correct as well. Right. You have the ability to destroy the base of the Shalmala. Correct. Right, right, right. That's exactly what you're right. saying. It's right. not really right. like you destroy it. Right. 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 One or two more questions they asked us yeah, yeah. to finish time. Sure, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> The, well, if you look at the, if you look at your miyahu very carefully, the last prop of your miyahu, Klaiso didn't believe that the prediction of the base should be destroyed, that Kachra would destroy his own house. And it's a magnificent message that describes his yoga following the trail uh, towards Klai Yisrael going into Gullah, going into Gullah, in the Bavil, and Klai Yisrael, he meets up with them and, they, he's, and they're crying. And he said, if you only cried before, this would have happened. You know what I'm saying? So it was Heichal Hashem, Heichal Hashem, Heichal Hashem Heima, which means as long as the house of Hashem is there, nothing will happen. It was almost like a false hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. They couldn't, 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 I'm, I'm having a very emotional reaction mm -hmm. yeah. because I am feeling more the responsibility that I have because so many of my brothers and sisters are so lost and not knowing this. Right. It, it, there's, there's millions of there's so many Jewish people. There's so many right. famous friends. Right. There's so much going on. Right. And they're so not aware of this. Right. So involved in everything right. else. It's so, it's so interesting, so sad. That there's such a small group of us trying to rebuild it. Right. So can we rebuild it? Of course. Just of course. us little guys? Yeah. Absolutely. Or like Steve Scott's I'll tell you why. It's very uh, simple. Uh, it's very, very simple. The Nashim this, this part is this. What, what, what gives us the surety, the certainty that we can do it, is because ruchness is not measured by quantity. Ruchnis has a different scale. So one act by one person can impact the world in a way that we can't even know the edge. In other words, you get an A for effort. No, it's more than that. It's more than that. No, but I'm just saying. It will get a If you remember the exchange from the show, it was when the Pasuk says, who come in Mishkan, and Mishkan like erected itself, and the Pasuk Rashi explains this exchange between Hashem and Moshe, and do kind of paraphrasing, so I'm sure that I'm not being very, very precise, that the Mishkan was very heavy. The physical person couldn't physically put it up. He one person, single hand, Moshe and do and he says to Hashem, I can't do this. How can I have this person do this? And he says, you, 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 and you, who come to Mishkan? Mishkan, he recognizes us. So he started. And this is what we see with Yaakov. Yaakov took the start. He didn't know where he was going to get the Shemin from. We don't have to know that. What we have to know is like Yaakov. Wake up, register, be wanted. Have the yearning for it, the you are part, right? And everything else is a such world who's doing. So we don't have to worry. So thank you for the follow-up. Two minutes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question for you that might benefit everyone. First of all, everyone.
everyone clap, so I'm going to say second of all first. Thank you so much. I've been wanting you to teach us here in this forum for a long time. I'm so glad it actually happened. Thank you, Connie, for making it happen, whoever else helped. Second of all, I know you took a break from your other classes. Are you teaching anything this summer like Shabbos? Shabbos. Um,